Elite Facts presents 10 Things You May Have Missed in this Star Wars The Last Jedi trailer. 10. Admiral Akbar and UO Stratura. We start the list off with not only one, but two recurring characters, one being UO Stratura and the other being Admiral Akbar. They appear quite shadowed in the trailer, and this could possibly be due to the focus on Leia in the scene, who herself seems to only make one appearance throughout the trailer. They all appear in what looks like a spaceship rather than a grounded base, and since later on in the trailer we witness the Resistance base under attack, it could mean that they're on the move. During this scene, you can make out what looks like senior resistance officer Stratura, played by Ken Leung, who made his first appearance in The Force Awakens. And if you look closer, although slightly less clear, you can make out a figure that looks like the one and only Admiral Akbar. Unfortunately, Eric Bowersfield, the voice actor for Akbar, passed away last year, but it seems the character is still alive and well in the Star Wars universe. Is this really Akbar? Or maybe it's a trap! 9. Skimmers or Crop Dusters We jump to a scene that involves some newly designed ships that we've never seen before. We all know that each Star Wars movie tends to bring in new ships, and it seems that The Last Jedi is no different. These ships look like a mix between a B-Wing and a pod racer, but what's their purpose? Are they Resistance or First Order? They seem to lack the First Order's signature tie-style shape, but also seem to have a sort of bad guy vibe about them. The scene itself shows these new ships skimming the surface of the newly added planet Crate while kicking up huge amounts of red smoke. But on closer inspection, the smoke isn't coming from the ships, it's actually coming from the surface itself. It's been said that the planet is a red rubyish color, so when the ships dig into the terrain, it drags up streams of red dust or smoke, possibly in a bid to obscure the vision of whatever is hunting them. 8. Journal of the Wills As in most of the Star Wars movies, and really any sort of sequel, there are references and homages to previous movies and characters in the trailer, as well as some audio, which we'll talk about later. In this scene, we see a row of unique-looking books, and lucky for us, we get to see one of them open. From the look of the book, it seems quite likely that it could be the fabled Journal of Wills, which is said to be an ancient journal that referenced the Jedi Order and served as a record of events that happened throughout the galaxy. It got a small mention in Rogue One when two of the characters referred to themselves as the Guardians of the Wills. And here's one for the Fun Facts Journal. The original idea of the story that became Star Wars was originally titled The Journal of the Wills Part 1. However, there's no mention of this in the trailer, although we do get a small glimpse of a page, which clearly shows the unmistakable wings and shining light of the Jedi Order symbol, which makes its first appearance in a live-action Star Wars. 7. Battle of Hoth or is it Crate? Much like the Battle of Hoth that occurred in The Empire Strikes Back, it seems like there will be a similar one taking place on the new planet of Crate, which as we mentioned earlier is a red rubyish planet, but its white surface we see is actually salt. The planet will serve as a former rebel base, and the location will play a major part in the movie when the Resistance show up to deal with a major threat. The scene comes right after the previously mentioned Skimmers segment, in which we see the new ships dropping down and spraying red smoke from the planet's surface. We only get a quick glimpse of what is lurking on the horizon, but you can make out what looks like some AT-AT walkers, except they look much bigger than the ones in previous movies. That's because these are AT-4Xs, aptly described as gorilla walkers, and boy, are there are a lot of them, which leads us to believe this could be a pretty big battle scene. 6. Captain Phasma Attacks They tried to trick us on this one, but we aren't buying it, and we believe we've found them out. With the use of some clever editing skills, it looks like Captain Phasma makes her explosive return, no pun intended, by destroying what appears to be the Jedi Academy. We see a scene with Luke and R2-D2 watching the building as it burns to the ground, followed by Captain Phasma and her goons walking out of the flames in that cool guys don't look at explosions kind of way. However, it's all down to some tricky trailer editing, as the scene with Phasma shows shiny, glossy color and what looks like metal and ship debris, which very much looks like the scene earlier in the trailer where we see Poe's X-Wing being destroyed, again, 
two X-Wings in two movies? Man, that can't be good. 5. Kylo Rett Kylo Ren can only be spotted once throughout the two-minute trailer, but when we see the son of Han and Leia, he's illuminated by the hazy red glow of his lightsaber. As the saber illuminates his face, we get the first look at his new scar, courtesy of Rey during their battle in The Force Awakens. Although it doesn't look half as bad as we expected, considering he was left with a pretty big gash on his face, but that's not important. What is important is the fact that we see Kylo surrounded by flames in the background. But flames from what? Well, we don't know. Could it possibly be the burning down of the first Jedi Temple? Or perhaps another battle altogether? And while we're on the subject of Kylo Ren, we should probably point out another scene in which we see his smashed mask, reminiscent of the Darth Vader mask he held in The Force Awakens. It's unknown if this is the mask he wore on Starkiller Base or if it's a new mask that he then smashes up in one of his fits of rage. Four. The Return of the Voiceover During the trailer, we hear dialogue spoken by Mark Hamill, who of course plays Luke Skywalker. But there are three key quotes that could easily be missed, and when you do finally hear all of these quotes, you realize that they all tie into the things that Rey sees – light, darkness, and balance. As Ray recites these three words, we hear snippets from past movies. First comes at the time of light, when we see Leia appear on screen and we hear her line from A New Hope, Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Second, we have darkness, as an image of Kylo Ren's destroyed mask appears on screen, accompanied by Vader's breathing and Obi-Wan saying, Seduced by the dark side. Finally, we move on to Balance, where we see the aforementioned Jedi Order symbol, along with Yoda's voice saying, It surrounds us. It binds us. Although Obi-Wan is featured twice, we're more focused on Yoda, as his quote brings importance to how the Force is something bigger than both light and dark. 3. Adventure Time with Finn and his coma the oh-so-lovable stormtrooper gone rogue, Finn, only makes a short appearance in the trailer, prompting that he may not have such a big part to play in this movie, since he's still in a coma from his injuries in The Force Awakens and doesn't even get to open his eyes. Which also begs the question, how long has he been in a coma? And how long will he be out of action? Don't worry, though, we've been told that he eventually gets up and running and even slips on the bromance jacket he received from Poe Dameron. It's not clear as to what kind of pod Finn is in, maybe he's still at a base or possibly shipped to safety in an escape pod. All we know is The Last Jedi picks up right where The Force Awakens left off, so he can't have been in a coma for that long, right? And does this also mean that the span of time between the two movies is the shortest between two saga movies yet? Hmm. 2. The Force-Sensitive Trait Remember that row of unique-looking books we mentioned earlier? Well, they're back. Obviously, we've named one of them as possibly being the Journal of the Wills, but what are the others? And why are they in a cave perched on what looks like a stand surrounded by tree branches? Here's our explanation. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, there was a Jedi temple on Coruscant, which served as a school and monastery for the Jedi Order, and in the heart of that temple grew a tree, a Force-sensitive tree to be exact. That was until it was removed by Darth Sidious, who assumed control of the galaxy and all that was left of said tree were just two living twigs that were hidden in an old Imperial base. These twigs were retrieved by Luke, and after keeping one for himself, he gave one to Shara Bey, who is none other than Poe Dameron's mother. Although all of that was just part of the comic Shattered Empire IV, so there's a good chance Luke may have planted the twig where he started the new Jedi Academy and possibly took part of it with him when he decided to relocate, as this definitely looks like a Force trait. Also, a little Easter egg. If you brighten up the image of Luke at the end of the trailer as he exits a cave, you can see that it's not a cave at all. It's the inside of a tree with what looks like Rey's staff propped up against the wall. 1. Grey Jedi Excuse me while I quote something from the Journal of Wills. Quote, First comes the day, then comes the night, after the darkness shines through the light. The difference, they say, is only made right by the resolving of Grey through refined Jedi sight. Journal of the Wills 7-477 This stands out as a very strong quote that is very significant to the trailer, with Star Wars always tackling themes of darkness and light. But it's Luke's final words where this verse really connects the most. 
there's a possibility that we may be seeing Luke become what's known as a Grey Jedi, a term of legend given to Force users who walk neither the light nor the dark path. They simply exist between the two. Some may also know another meaning, being a Jedi who distances themselves from the Order and the High Council. This isn't all that new, however, as we've seen the Rebels series introduce us to the likes of Ahsoka Tano, who uses a white lightsaber and exists away from the Jedi Order, as well as Bendu, a Force-sensitive creature, not dark, not light, but simply described as the one in the middle. It's possible that Luke is wanting to distance himself from the Jedi and Sith division and travel to the first Jedi Temple in search of answers, since his first attempt at building a new Jedi Order failed. In doing so, he may turn Rey and possibly himself into more balanced Force users, who bypass the typical notions and therefore make the difference right. We hope you enjoyed hearing and looking back at some of the things you may have missed along with some of our theories. If you have any theories about what's in the trailer or possible scenes we failed to mention, please let us know in the comments below. For now, in the similar words of Luke Skywalker, it's time for the video to end. May the Force be with you. Don't forget to like us and subscribe for more Elite Facts.